Okay. Hey guys, I am here to do um, my update video and um, just changing some settings. Um, I think the live chat should be there. I'm not sure. So I want to say hello to where I can see if I can see your comments. I had to go without the glasses this time because I had a reflection from the light and then it was doing where you guys could see my tablet in the the um in my glasses and it was distracting to me so i'm sure it would have been distracting to you so okay i can see i'll see hi belinda she's watching it's showing that it's on top chat i want it on live chat live chat there we go okay so anyway i decided to do this video live because it has been a while since i've did my done my last update video and in order to have recorded the vi recorded the video and edited the video and with as much stuff as I have to show you guys, like it's ridiculous, it was taking forever. So it was easier to do it, you know, to record live. And I like the format better because I can see the comments. I can react with you guys if you're watching it live. If not, it'll be just a regular update. And now that YouTube is doing the the chat it makes it a lot easier because then people can see the chat as they watch the video so anyway um as always this is as i said in in the description this is my regular irregular video <laughs> um life just kind of exploded um connor started his baseball it is six and under coach pitch guys i never expected it to be as fierce and as competitive as it is um like, we were having two and three games a week, including weekend practices, and, like, I just had no time. And people are so competitive. I'm like, guys, these guys are six. These kids are six. I don't know. I, I told myself that I would never be a competitive ball mom because I would remember that those were somebody else's kids out on the field that we were playing against. I was cheering when other kids, when other babies were getting out, and that's not something I'm proud of. But I did. <laughs> but um, they cheered when my kid got out, so it's okay. It's okay. But um, Connor last night in his last, very last game, took a line drive to the knee. Um, I did not see it happen. I'm kind of glad that I didn't actually see it happen. I think it would have freaked me out a lot more if I'd actually seen the interaction because the sound was horrible. I was um, actually... Texting my husband, telling him about the game, walking to the other side of the field to where I could talk to Connor through the fence and kind of help direct him on his third base skills. Not that I have any third base skills, but still. Um, and I hear the ball ping off the bat, and I hear the thud of it hit somebody, and I hear everybody kind of go, oh my gosh, did it hit him? And I looked up, and I saw, like, I saw the coach moving. I kind of thought the coach had gotten hit, because usually it's the coach that gets hit, because they're the pitchers. And then I looked closer and realized it was my kid that got hit. <laughs> so I went kind of jogging back to the dugout, and he bravely walked off, barely tearing up, you know. And he said, I tried not to cry, but my eyes just made the tears. But he did okay. He it's, um, It was swollen last night, and he had the lace, you know, the lace spot marks. But today it was fine. We put some ice, and I gave him some Motrin when he went to bed. And today he was showing off his war wound, his bruise. So, but he's good. Um... I don't think I'll ever be get used to seeing my kid hit, get hit with a ball. I don't know how football moms do it. But anyway, gosh, that's enough. And then it's just summertime. It's the end of the school year. We've got things wrapping up. So hopefully, oddly enough, when he's out of school, things are kind of easier to manage. And I think I'll be able to be more regular with my videos because y'all have never heard me say that. So I do have some whips to show you guys. I have two new starts because this is a month and a half since my last video and then I have what I had planned to do for mania and how I failed at doing my mania and kind of what I'm gonna plan to do for mania now because I still have half a month so this is my half halfway point so and then I have a lot of birthday haul a lot of birthday gifts and then a lot of the stashing. A local stitcher was cleaning out her craft room. Guys, I don't know how she has any stash left. Some of it I honestly grabbed because I think she's going to want it later. 
and I'm just going to hold it for her. And then later on when she's like, I wish I hadn't given that away, I'm going to be able to say, oh, but you did it. I have it for you. If not, then eventually I'll stitch it myself. Um, I had tried to kind of drop out of the Stitch from Stash group because I was late this month checking in and I felt guilty. And then I, um, Stephanie, Miss Oso Crafty, messaged me and she said a lot of people were late. If that was the reason I was dropping out, to not let that be the reason I dropped out. So I'm back in Stitch from Stash and I am currently to the good. I think I'm to the good without June's budget or without May's budget. We just checked in for April, so it's May. Yes, for May's budget with 47 plus my 25. So I'm still doing good, but that's a lot of birthday money. Like, I got a lot of birthday money. So, let's just jump right in. I will start with my whips. Um, I'm going to try to go in chronological order, and I don't remember what I showed you last time. So, I think I possibly showed you this. I'm not 100% sure. So, just in case, I'm going to show it to you again anyway. Oh, I'm not seeing the chat. Are you guys okay? I just want to make sure I'm not missing comments. And sorry if you're not commenting. I just don't want to miss them if you are commenting. Um, the first, I think I'm showing you this. I'm not 100% sure. But I joined in with Jennifer Upton in the very old um, sampler group to do this piece. And this is the one where I borrowed a lot of different... Um, a lot of different flosses or was given a lot of flosses from fellow stitchers to where I could get everything that I needed. Lori gave me some and Miss Connie gave me some. And this is where I am. This is on 32 count. I think it's just an NCG textile linen. I love it. I'm one of the few that love the um that love the NCG textile linen. Let me see, where's my camera? There we are. And um, this is where I am. Guys, this is kind of hard to do in that. Let me try to get this fabric kind of under control here. And pardon my tired mom eyes, the glasses. So, in order to get this, and another reason I like the live update is I can, I can see what you can see. So I can see if it's clear. Is So this is the same variegated floss, but I've cut it. It's hard to explain, but like you go light to medium and then medium to dark, and then light to medium and then medium to dark. So this is stitched with one set of the floss. This is stitched with another set of the floss. This is, and then again. So then this will be darker purple down here at the bottom. But there's my progress on that. Some people are already finished on this, and I've just started. I am an ADD, diagnosed, not just claiming it, ADD stitcher, and it shows because I have so much to do, so many things I want to do, and my stitchy bug has been gone. Um, the I'll get into that later. It's been that I haven't, I haven't wanted to work on my whips. But then I have felt guilty not working on my whips, so that I end up just working on nothing. So that doesn't do well. And then I had a another new start. And I know my niece knows I made the video. Okay. If my niece is watching this video later, she needs to look away because part of this is her Christmas present and I don't want her to see it. I don't think she watches my videos that regularly. If you're watching this, Brie, look away now. Um, I had purchased her a pattern and a I had a bag made for her. And um, then I kitted up the pattern, gave her some floss and some needles and stuff. And um, gave her that for her birthday. While I was doing that, I had purchased this pattern for her, but when I got the pattern, I realized it was going to be too complicated. So instead, I'm stitching it for her for her for Christmas. And it's called Blue Gymnast. I don't have a picture of what it's going to look like when it's finished because it is a PDF and it's just like the mock-up of it. So somebody could technically probably stitch from it. 
but it's just a lot of different colors and it's a girl doing a some kind of movement headstand I guess handstand on the balance beam which is her preferred um, event anyway um, she does it all she does the vault she does the floor she does the uneven bars and then she does the beam I have all of her meets are on days that I work so I've not been able to go it makes me nervous anyway when I see her videos so it's probably a good thing that I can't go but one of the reasons I decided that this was not for her is that even though this is a tiny pattern it has 34 different colors of blue in it that was about $40 of my stash money <laughs> But, um, so I'm doing that instead. That way, I can see. Colors. Ah, I did not know that. Um, Dee said that she did the same with the little, the light to, me, light to medium, medium to light with her, um, forest grew, um, piece whip and that it was a neat way to be able to get all the colors of the floss and it is it does really show off the variations of the of the floss but there that one is and then I had a give up like a complete FF like will never be finished and it's wasting a piece of fabric because I cannot frog this piece um this was the cherished Cherished Stitchers, Stitches, um, Grave Digger piece. I was doing it on 32 count Dapple by Picture This Plus. And it, I was using the, um, number eight pearl at the ball cotton of DMC 2 over 2. Except for the 1 over 1 in the lettering, which is where I was using number 4 braid. Um, just in the plain black, but it's sparkly black. And I was doing 1 over 1 for the letters. So, I started stitching this. I loved this piece and then realized that this was not wide enough. And not only was this not wide enough, this entire section is about 15 to 20, probably more than that. Like, I have to get corner of graveyard and then Ann Crip Street up here. There's no way that's going to happen. Like, I am so off. And then when I tried to pick out the one over one to move everything. I ripped the fabric and there is just no, sorry. There is just no way to save that. So it's a give up. Lori even came over and was going to help me pick out the pieces and or possibly patch the fabric because she didn't want me to waste the fabric. And she said, nope, it, it's, it's worth the, to just be done with this one piece of fabric. So that's my give up. I can, I guess I can cut like some of the pieces off and make ornaments. Like, you know, like I get a couple ornaments out of that, I think, maybe. But there's my give up. I will eventually, when I'm not angry at it anymore, restart it because I do love the piece. And then I also worked on my sow with um, Elena. I know Elena and I know um, Olivia were doing this. And I know some of the other girls were doing the um, Beatles style. Blackbird Beatles style. And I was working on Eleanor Rigby. This is what it will look like when it's finished. And this is where I currently am. I have finished all of the baskets and all of the flowers in here. I have to do the border and then um, this has got some specialty stitch. That is one complaint I have about this chart. Um, I don't know if it'll show up. It shows up better I think on this side. Those little flowers here are eyelet stitches within the cross stitches but it doesn't say that. Um, it's got just like it almost looks like back stitching marks on it and then I wonder if I can just show you that one it just has that little bitty but that's an eyelet stitch and it doesn't say in the instructions 
the only reason I called it is because I was looking really close at the pattern on the finished, you know, as the model and realized that that's what it was supposed to be. My um, husband had decided that he wanted me to stitch the pink one for a co -work, for one of his co-workers for, um, for them because they were having a baby. But we talked about it and we decided instead of spending the money on all the flosses and to get it framed and stuff like that, that they would probably appreciate a um, gift card more. So we did a gift card instead. And this is a... Um, New, I have several Q-Snap covers that I got from, um, what is the company? It's on Facebook. Oh, the lady's name's Barbara Dietz. I can't think of her actual, her actual company name now to save my life. But, um, she makes different size Q-Snap covers and she also makes a Q snap sock it like fits over the stitch piece which I'm I don't know what that's for I don't see myself using it and then she makes the scroll, scroll rod covers and then the same little sock for the scroll rod um, pieces but um, she had a sale going on and I got a few just different sizes this one of course is my favorite because it has dragonflies and then I got a plain black one and then I have one that my husband's using on his piece and then um, still trying to get him to come on the video with me and show his progress. We'll see. However, he doesn't really yell at me quite as much about, you know, why aren't you finishing these pieces? Why aren't you finishing these pieces? Because he gets about 15, like one night he sat down and he literally said, if I can get 10 stitches and I'll be happy. And I kind of giggled. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's going to take you 10 years to stitch that, that piece. And then mania hit. And because I was already a little overwhelmed about the amount of whips that I have that I'm not touching and not working on, I decided that I was going to do the monogamania and just work on one piece for the 15 days. And then I realized, well, I can't work on that piece when I'm at work. So then I was like, so I'll just skip the weekends. And then it became, oh, well, I didn't stitch it all this day. So I'm going to just stitch on this piece at least 15 days out of the month. And that's still kind of my goal, but then I'm not doing the monogamous mania either. So I think I'm going to add in some new starts and kind of do this that I have to work on this piece for 15 days. So far I've made it 5 out of the, what, 17 days, so that's not too bad. Um, and I will still try to get 10 more days of stitching in on this piece and then I will feel completed. Or feel like I somewhat somewhat made my goal and that of course is starry night but i will say i have noticeable for the first time for me noticeable progress so this is where i am at the beginning of this year i barely had half of this done. like i had all of this half done and then a little bit like up in here and then i am now i have all this done so I am still doing my cross country method. It's the best for me. I can't park. Like I've got this thread parked, but it's just because of where I stopped. It's not officially parked. When I pick up, I'll pick up with that thread. All the extra threads kind of, <laughs> these says do Megan mania. That's it. So definitely Megan mania. But um, yeah, I've got a lot of progress. My goal for this year was to have this top half finished. This, the top half of this half finished. And this goes out about three more squares or four more squares. And then it'll be like down here and then about to here. And I'll have most of it done. So I'm going to go all the way across and then start at the bottom and go all the way across again. So I am very proud of my progress. But I didn't stick to my monogamous like I was supposed to. But I blame work. <laughs> I always blame work. But there that is. And I still love this piece. And now that I'm starting to see some progress, I'm enjoying stitching it more than I did originally. So. Today, whenever, um, I think, yeah, Connie was here for a little while today. And, um, I was trying to make sure she was still here. Um, my husband was getting up for work and I kind of laughed because I working, was working on a new start. One of the new starts for my mania. 
And I said, I wonder how long it's going to be before he asks me if I'm not working on Starry Night. Because he knew that's what I wanted to do, was to work on Starry Night to get some progress done. And he wakes up and he speaks to everybody. He sees me stitching and goes, that's not Starry Night. And kind of just rolled laughing. So, with that said... To show one thing that I got as a gift from Melody Stitches is this Earthly Treasures by Plum Street Samplers. This was on my wish list at 123 Stitch for a while. And it says, Dwell not on earthly treasures, nor covet or envy or pout. Thou entered this world and brought nothing in, and will carry with thee nothing out. I thought that was really pretty. My voice, I like that saying. So, this was one of my gifts, along with the threads. My first time using one of these guys. Miss Connie gave me this to try. It's the first time I've used it, and I'm really liking it so far. I've just got to get used to it. As a piece of floss falls off. But, um, so, I've decided that I'm going to start a few Mania pieces. As well. That way I'm doing both. I'm doing monogamous and then I'm going to start, I think, at least three, if not four, maybe four pieces this month. So I do have, I have both manias. Leave it to the undecided female to do both manias. Sorry, I'm picking up the floss that I dropped. And the other pieces that I want to start ooh, are, oh, I forgot a whip. Sorry, let me show you this whip real quick. My Lunch Bunch Trio piece that I stitch with um, Mandy Youngblood. She has a channel. And then, of course, Connie from Connie G Designs. Yeah, be jealous. I get to stitch with Connie G. I am working on Christmas. And I did. I did take pictures this time of my before. But I can't upload them to the live video. So. But I did take pictures. I put them on Instagram. This is what we are doing for the Lunch Bunch Trio piece. It's Christmas Eve by Prayer Schooler. This is the reprint. And this is where I am. Connie is kicking our tails. She's like a third of the way done. I'm about halfway and Mandy's about a little bit less than me. But here is my... So this is the entire piece, and I have finished most of this half. This is on um, Dusty Blue by LJ Fabrics. Guys, I absolutely love his fabric. Um, I like the more tonal pieces. Those tend to go fast when he has his cells, and it's hard for me to catch them. He has a lot of, he has, not a lot, he has, he does always have some of the more heavy-handed, I call it heavy-handed, the more, um, variegated, like the yellows and blues and greens, which are beautiful pieces. It's just not something I see myself stitching on. Like, some of them I want to buy and just, like, hang on the wall, because I think they aren't themselves. But this is a 32-count even weave. And I will definitely buy some more of his fabric because I'm, it's so soft. I don't know. I'm just really impressed with his fabric. And his pictures are very true. Like, this is the exact color I was expecting it to be when I ordered it. It's all charted. It's all stitches charted except I'm changing these colors. These, for some reason, were like in beiges and light blues, which I'm not the designer, but it didn't match the tone of the piece. Plus, it kind of got lost in the light blue fabric, so I changed mine to just be gold, green, and blue, and they're just the colors that are in the in the chart. Not too daring in my in my excursion there. So, any much? So, back to the mania. I decided that this was going to be one of the pieces that I started. Wow, I'm everywhere, guys. So sorry. And this is my meager start from just today. Entered. <laughs> That's it. I entered into this piece. <laughs> and look 
Am I dra another dragonfly? Needle monitor. I have dragonflies everywhere, guys. There that is. I'll probably stitch on this one some this week. Tomorrow's Friday. And I need, need to be my Friday starting night day. And I need another day. So I'll probably work on starting night tomorrow. Because I got a little bit of a fix on, you know, something new. And then the other two that I plan to start, at least two that I plan to start for Mania. My late Mania. This one is in my Emily bag. My eclectic possessions bag that I got for my birthday. Guys, look at these colors. Pinks and like this blue color. Like this is amazing. And then like the fabric she matched it with. Like it is amazing. And I think she showed me this fabric again. And I talked about how pretty this fabric was. So she does that a lot. And this is Kindred Spirits by, I'll show you the pattern, by the Primitive Needle. This is one of the ones that I got in that eBay haul. And I'm going to stitch it on. Silk Weavers is called Brandied Apples, I believe. None of this is as called for. Hoping this will show up as true to color. Where's my piece of white? I have stuff everywhere. Where I need apples. Nah, it's showing up a little more gray than it is. It's got a little more pink to it. Let's see. Let's take the white out and see if that'll show up better. There we go. It's got more pink to it, kind of a light mauve color. It does have some gray in it. It's like a gray pink color. And then of course this orange, just a little bit of orange in there. And I'm stitching it with my own, I pulled out my own colors from um, my color and cotton collection. And my little piece of cardboard go out now. These are inkwell. Part apple. And primitive pumpkin. And together they look like this. So there those are. So this piece is the one that I decided I was going to, after I had the, my God, my hair. Welcome to Georgia in the summer. My hair is poofing. Um, I was going to stitch this and when I had the give up piece happen with my cherished stitches, I then broke this piece out. Completely mathed wrong, completely measured wrong, and did not think the fabric would fit. And then later on, when Lori and Emily were over stitching, they pointed out to me that it would very easily fit on that fabric. And I was very excited, which then prompted a sarcastic gift from a friend. And then I got a measuring tape to show me how to measure fabric. And then the other one that I want to start is one that I got it from, I purchased through McKenna from the attic. And this is from the Plum Street Samplers, a Swiss proverb. And it says, shared joy is double joy, but shared sorrow is half sorrow. I'm just going to pick again some of my own colors out of the um, color and cotton or my, just whatever I have. Maybe use their DMC because they do have a DMC um, comparison on this one, I think. So... And the third one I want to start is a gift from, again, Melody Stitches for my birthday. So she sent me the chart to the, um, what is the name of that one? Earthly Treasures and the floss and some fabric that would work, but I had a piece that I used towards a 35 count. Oh, yeah, that would help you. That's 35 count um, homespun 
elegant, I think, homespun. Classic homespun. And I wanted to do it on that piece. And I saved some of the fabric that she sent for other things. But, ooh, wrong way. This she sent me. It is the... This is Over the Moon from the Buy a Little House Nina Works from their Sun, Moon, and Stars chart and thread pack set. So there are two other charts in this pattern, in this series, and I'm going to buy the other two, and I plan to start this this month as well. But I have to get a piece of fabric that will fit all three. She sent me fabric that this one will fit on. But I want to do all three, so I'm going to buy the other two. They come with a floss as well. They're on sale on 123 Stitch right now. So I'm going to get them. And then, um, actually, from where I've looked on 123 Stitch, they're about, it'll almost be like buy one, get one from the other prices I've seen. But, um, and they all come with the thread. And then I'm going to stitch this all on one long piece. And it shows um, over the moon, beneath the stars, in the sunshine. Under the sun. Over the moon, beneath the stars, and under the sun. But there that is. So I will start that this month. Those are the three that I want, the other three. So there'll be four starts this month plus 15 days on one whip. That's mania for me. Okay. And then my last whip is something that I realized I have not shown you guys in a while and that I should have. And that is the blanket that I started making for my son. That I started crocheting for my son. And I have been working on it. I just keep forgetting to show it to you guys. So, um, as some of you know, um, ouch, English is pinching me. Why well, cannot place her name right now? I can see her face. She works as a dispatcher for 911. Um, I can tell you, so I know where she lives. Why well, cannot give her name? Anyway, she did a a um, crochet along. She taught us how to crochet because a lot of people were, were wanting to learn how to crochet. So she did a crochet along and I learned how to crochet and I made a scarf. And of course, after that scarf, Pam. Yes, D Stitcher, Pam. Pam's Crafty Corner. Sorry. Oh, this is a Diet Coke. It is not a beer. <laughs> but we need a beer, but it's not a beer. Um... So I started looking up because while we were looking for more, um, more yarn, my son came up to me with a very pink yarn when he does not enjoy the color pink and asked me to make him something because the yarn was so soft. And I said, do you want pink? And he said, well, no, but this yarn is really soft, so it'll be okay. So I found him blue in that yarn and I've started him a blanket. Um, I found this tutorial on YouTube. The last time I tried to link to it, it clipped me oddly enough for copyright I think I will try to again and if I can't and you want to know where it is um, message me on Facebook or on Instagram I'm uh, Megan May May on Facebook and then Stitching May on Instagram and I can send you the link to the video that way if it won't let me upload it it is a simple repetitive um this is where I'm at this is holding the half guys this is supposed to be a lap bl blanket it fits my flipping king bed widthwise. I mean, this thing is so flipping long, wide. He will be done by the time he's married, and it can be his wedding present from his mom. So, <laughs> but, um, so it is just double crochets repeated, and then they are repeated within themselves to make it kind of look like a shell stitch. I think you can see how that works. This, it, the yarn is um, just plain acrylic red heart yarn. It's a self-striping yarn in the colorway Cool Stripes. This is my fourth skein. This is how far I am. And I'm using a, I don't know how to do the proper crochet stuff, a 7 millimeter crochet hook. So, which is a U.S. It doesn't say, so I don't know. But, that is it. 
So I do this mainly like when I go to family gatherings. I can sit and work on this because I have to have a pattern in front of me because it's just double crochets. And then, um, that's what we call it here in the U.S. I think it has another name in the U.K. And then I do it sometimes like, in a, like when we are sitting there as a family watching TV, I'll sit and work on this because it's just something easy. But I'm making some progress. I want it to eventually be <laughs> as tall it is, as it is wide. We'll see how that goes. I don't know if that's going to work or not. <laughs> and I have it in this trusty Star Wars bag because that's just what I had available. Okay, so on to haul and then birthday haul and birthday gifts. And then more de stash stuff. Guys, it's, it's ridiculous. My floor is covered. Get you a drink, get you some stitching, and get ready to look at some stash. Okay, I'll start with my birthday haul. So, lovely Belinda sent me a gift all the way from Australia. She sent me, first of all, I think some of this is already put up too, but I'll show you what I have. These beautiful dragonfly earrings. And then a matching dragonfly necklace. They're pretty. Can't wait to wear it. I left it on the card so I could show it to you guys. And then she sent us all kind of candy. Of course, she sent us some Tim Tams. A lot of you knows what these are, knows what know what those are by now. She sent me some. Chico, Allen's Chico's. These are, I can smell them. These are chewy chocolate flavored jelly babies. So they're like gummy bears, but they're chocolate flavored. And they're good, but very different. Um, I wish you could smell these things. For you girls out there, do you remember those little like chocolate erasers that you would smell the eraser and it, or you would erase and it would smell like chocolate or cupcakes or whatever. It smells like the chocolate cupcakes of those and it almost tastes like that. Um, they're good. Just different. Something that I think it would be an acquired taste. Because like my son first ate one, he didn't like it. And later on he's like, let, let me try another one. I, I kind of like that. So, she sent me those. These are wonderful. Strawberry licorice bites. Now, like that, the size. Like these things are huge bites. <laughs> like it's two bites. <laughs> and then she also sent my son because this is his very favorite candy and it's only available in Australia. So much so that when he opened them up and opened up the first piece, he said, Mama, they look different. Apparently the ones before he said were sitting down and these koalas are standing up. But these are his favorite candy. We're not allowed to have any. He loves these koalas. Scott asked for one earlier and he was like, No, those are my koalas. You can have some of yes, you can have some of the chocolate gummy bears. <laughs> but not my koalas. And then she sent us all what we call here in the South koozies. But they call them stubby holders, apparently. I couldn't figure out what on the on the customs list that said stubby holders. I was like, what in the world did she send me? What is a stubby holder? And do I want them to know that I got one? But this is the one I have claimed. My son, my husband um, has a list of, like, talking about a flower show and what they're supposed to do. And it was like, um... Say yes, dear, in your most sincere voice. Get another stubby. Um, walk and watch it. Like it was cute. It was hilarious. It had a list, and he was he was rolling reading it. And then uh, then my son. Then there's a third one that I assume is for my son. And it's um just another, it's another beautiful landscape. I mean, I want to be there, on that beach, stitching, right now. Of course, with Belinda. Belinda and her family have got to be there with us too. But it's so. Pretty. 
And then she sent me way too much fabric and a beautiful ostrich postcard. Look at these boobs. And she sent my son some books. Possum's big surprise. Somewhere in Australia, which my son loves this one. Give me home give me a home with a gum with a gum among the gum trees. I like this one. And then this book. The man from Snowy River. So I did not realize how different Australian English was from American English until I read this book aloud to my son. I felt like I was learning to read again. And I even looked at my husband one time and said, am I speaking English? <laughs> because I'm not comprehending this at all. I think she told me later that her husband, that her husband Jeff told her that she was rude. It was mean to send me this book. I think, oh, was that an emu? <laughs> That's an emu, not an ostrich. <laughs> she sent me a, a <laughs> Belinda said this is an emu and a, not an ostrich. Okay, it's an emu. Oh, my husband's watching. Hey, honey. <laughs> but I read this book. He can attest to me reading this book and how much I was tripped up. Belinda's husband, Jeff, said that it was mean for her to have sent this book for me. And she asked me how I got along reading it. <laughs> Children's books. No, just showing you. I'm not going to read it. I can't read it. Um, I do think I'm going to send her... A video of me reading this book just to where she can get a kick out of my southern accent trying to say some of these Australian phrases <laughs> and I think next week we've got a book day for school for the last day I think I'm sending this one to let his teacher read to the class to see if it throws her off too and then she sent me fabric she sent me this wonderful fossil by Picture This Plus. It's 32 counts. This beautiful brown color. It's so pretty. And she sent me... My husband thought I was reading children's books on my videos now. That wouldn't get me copyright infringement, would it? She sent me this beautiful picture, this plus 32 count Noel. Reds and greens. That's a famous poem. Oh, The Man from Snowy River is a famous poem. Huh. And the, so maybe if I could get the timing down. I could read. Maybe that's what it was. It was the timing of the poem. That's why I'm going to close. This is Cyprium. Again, picture this plus 32 count. This one's an evenly. This one's Laguna. Oh, these are all Laguna. Okay. Look how pretty that one is. And it looks similar to the fossil, but then it's so different. Like, this is more red, or this is more kind of tan, tan orange. So I have this, I already have a piece for this, and I'll show it to you in just a minute. So I already have something picked out for this one. That I'm going to start soon. I say soon. I don't know when I'll start it. <clears throat> and then she sent me, I've never had any Color Cascades fabric. This is Silver Spring Opal. It's 32 count as well. She knows all of my 32 counts. Look how pretty this is. And it's huge. Like, this is doubled. Like, this is way, 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 way too big. She was way too nice to me. And the opal is, like, amazing. It's not too sparkly, but then sparkly enough to where you can definitely, definitely see it. Is it showing up? Yeah.
paddle rattle. Sorry. And this is 32 count Belfast linen. And that is what Belinda sent me for my birthday. Thank you, Belinda. I appreciate it all. I still have Tim Tams in there in the refrigerator. We will eat them one at a time until we fight over the last one. And then Melody sent me a gift. Melody Stitches, who said tonight that she might do a video soon. She sent me a gift. She sent me that Plum Street samplers um, pattern and floss. And then she sent me the Little House Needleworks as well. And then she sent this something different. The American flag. And these are all, all Algerian eyelets. It came with the fa fabric and floss. This Thankful Quaker by Benton Creek. Guys, look at this. It's so pretty. It's an autumn. This is the best way. Autumn Quaker. And then the coolest. Trisha, you can't have it until I'm done with it. And then somebody's already asking to stitch it after me. The coolest out of any sampler I think I've ever seen. And I'm so excited about this one and I cannot wait to stitch it. It is the City Stitcher um, Adam and Eve Sampler number 20. Number 20 Adam and Eve Sampler by the City Stitcher. Designs by Janet Miller. Look at this Adam and Eve Sampler. This is my favorite one by far. I cannot wait to stitch this guys. That's just amazing. And then she also sent me Dream of Daisies by Rosewood Manor. Because I love daisies. And I'm going to stitch this on this piece of Cyprium that I was sent by Belinda. Because I think, let's see if I can get it to show. I think these colors will really pop on this fabric. That's what I'm hoping at least. Let's see. Let me hold it back. If it fits, I'm pretty sure it's gonna fit. There we go. That glare is horrible. Let me see this out so we don't see the glare. I think that'll look really, really, really pretty. So that's my plan. I don't think that'll be I gotta I gotta get the week style works for that. So that'll be a little while before I before I start it. Gotta save up some sit from stash budget money. And then Melody sent me this beautiful garden plaque. I was looking at something very similar to this the other day at a store. And then I got this one. It's got daisies and dragonflies. And she sent me some fabric as well. And then some nail hook kits. Gosh, guys, I was spoiled. And some needle miners. I've got a Where's my camera? A snowman eagle minder. Let me just take it out. And then a dragonfly needle minder. Santa bead kit and a pumpkin bead kit. I love that Santa. He's so cute. And this pumpkin. I love it all. She sent me some 
threads. Two of these are Victoria Motto threads. One is called Matched Peaches and then Orange Maze. And then some Needle Necessities, Tide Pool, and Blue Bayou. I love that Tide Pool piece. And then some different neutral fabrics because I am a neutral fabric kind of girl. Some are natural. Let's see, I'll show you the ones. That are different. This is Coffee Kona, Cafe Kona. And then there is, I have no clue what this fabric is, but I love it. It's stamped. So it's got variegations on, on variations, variegated, whatever, modeled on the side. But then this side is plain. So I think that's a fabric flare. Aren't they the ones that print their fabric on one side? And then just some more neutral, neutral fabric fabrics. This one looks like it's dyed because it's got some little different little colors here and there. I thought it was pretty too. So I really appreciate all of that. Thank you, Melody. I look forward to your video. I know life is going crazy for you right now. Because, again, the end of the school year. I got stuff everywhere. Okay. And then, from the lovely Connie, she gave me this beautiful bag. And we've been watching Anne on Netflix when we stitch. So she sent me the Soda Stitch Anne of Green Gables. Love it. And then she gave Mandy and I both some silks from Moe's. Just some random silk colors. I've never stitched with any of most silks. I've never tried any. So, they're kind of tangly. They look like they may be a little tanglier than, than um, the dinky dyes. This, this one's named Root Beer, and that's like the perfect name for that. It's kind of a pinky. They're all, and then, oh no, this was the one. Corned beef. Does that not look like corned beef? sandwich like on a on a Reuben sandwich and then she was the one that kind of sarcastically gave me the um, tape measure because I couldn't measure anything and then I have haul and be stash so oh and then I need to get a gift from somebody that wanted to name somebody said something for it. They are slippery, but give a good, beautiful shine. Um, these said that they are very, that the most silks are very slippery, but they give a really pretty shine. They are very, very shiny. And then somebody sent me a small gift that wanted to remain anonymous, but, and I appreciate it, and I'll respect the, your privacy, but she sent me this wonderful little bag, and then she sent me just a handful of DMC floss. More than a handful. Two handful of DMC flosses. And this neat little bag. Okay. Then on to stash and then D stash that I acquired. So I'll start with what I acquired. What I purchased for sure. Sorry. That's my big down into my bag. Okay. Of course I got my monthly installment of color and cotton. I wonder if my husband's still watching because he's about to see how much I spent. Look away, honey. Look away. Most of it was birthday money. 
This is Antique Rose, Purple Iris, Golden Ale, Hazel Brown, and then Bermuda. And for some reason, this gold, this reminded me of Mardi Gras for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the purple and gold. But I kind of got Mardi Gras feel to these colors. As always, completely impressed by her threads. From McKenna, I purchased the Silver Sampler. Um, this is Curly Girl? Curly Locks. And it says, there once was a girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. And when I was younger, I had a curl that was right in the middle of my forehead. And my mom would read this, say this poem to me over and over again. And then on top of that, it has a red head on the pattern. So I had to get that. I absolutely had to get that. And this will go in my stitch room. Because I don't really see it going anywhere else in my room. But it reminded me of my mom, so I had to get it. <clears throat> and then I got Prairie Schooler. This is called Mary Had a Little Lamb. I got it because I thought I could stitch the schoolhouse and then like a teacher's name for a teacher gift at some point. You've already seen that one. That was recess. I got the Prairie Schooler. Prairie Schooler Rabbit Run. This is the original hard chart from the attic. Stories to Live By, the Adam. I have the E one of these already. I got it when I was in Austin, Texas. And this is the Adam one. And it says, Adam, oh Adam, he did not abide, partook of the fruit, and then he died. Then he did hide. This is my Sunday school lesson. Mary Wiggins, 1835. Dad Wilson, hi May, you obviously, yes, I did, obviously survived the dinosaur expedition. I did. And they had like these people in costumes. Oh, it was hilarious. They broke through the gate and ran and chased everybody around. It was an amazing time. We'll definitely, if it comes back to Atlanta, we'll definitely go back. But the guy did kind of freak me out because he said that, um, the tour guy said that apparently the closest could have this mixed up and I was told this in an exhibit so if it's wrong it's not my science um the closest relative apparently to the t-rex is a chicken and then at some point the embryo in the chicken egg looks like a t-rex until a certain point and then it flips into a chicken so they are trying to figure out how to stop, and if they stop the flipping to a chicken, if that will, God, this thing is killing my legs. If that will be able to make an actual T-Rex again. So now not only do I have to worry about cloning dinosaurs, I have to worry about these crazy scientists turning a chicken into, <laughs> yes, and then I'm moving to Mars, I will go, and be the dude in my, on the planet all by myself. So now I have to worry about cloning dinosaurs. Because that's realistic. And now these crazy scientists deciding that our life on Earth is not crazy enough without freaking T-Rexes running around. T-Rex chickens running around. And then I got this again from um, the Attic Home Sweet Home. These stitcher said she'll come with me. We will go and we will stitch all the things on Mars. How about that? Stitch all the things on Mars. Or the Antarctica. We can just go where it's cold. Because I don't, because they're reptiles, so they can't live where it's cold, right? So we'll just go where it's really, really I'll come to UD in Canada. We'll, we'll hang out in Canada. What day that is? Bless our home. And this is from who did this one? Designed by Lynn Lena Rose. Lena Rose. And then I got the Jordan Purve Quaker to Halloween. She said I was just gonna say that, okay, you move here. 
I could deal with some cold weather. I could deal with some cold weather. And then I got the Liberty Row. Gone to Liberty Gone to Town Part Two of Libertyville. And this came with the silks. That's what the whole piece looks like. And then Connie got Christmasville and we're gonna stitch them and then swap them. So Okay. And what else? Is that everything that I purchased? I must have everything I purchased. Let's see here. I got this from my Goodwill. It's just a random, it's got some of the Joan Elliott Angels of the Month in there, and I have some of the other ones of those, so that's why I got it. Let's see if I can show you. Where were they? I just saw them. Poppy Angel. And then a. I had one more. I thought, thought I had two. Oh, look, we've got butterflies too. Hmm. But I got it for the, for the Joan Elliott's. And then. This one was for my Goodwill as well. I ran out the address of the store. My local one. It's not really my town. But. Why did I get this one? There was a reason I got this one. What was that reason? Because it was cross stitch. I felt like I had to save it. Oh, there it is. It's the sample. This piece for this hummingbird. This stitch for my mother in law, Detroit, because she loves hummingbirds. She asked me to stitch her a hummingbird at some point. Another cross stitch magazine. These were all like a dollar at my Goodwill. The Goodwill that I go to. Christmas one here that I wanted. And then the rest of this nope, not all of it. I purchased two more things. So McKenna showed one of these Needle Mania designs on her ouch sale. And I liked it, but not a whole lot, like not enough to get it. But then I started looking into the designer and fell in love with this one. And this one is... So, I fell in love with this one. Couldn't find it anywhere. Kid you not, flipped over to st Stash and Load and there it was. So I got it. I purchased this one from um, 123Stitch. When power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. And I absolutely love that color scheme because it matches my house. And I absolutely love that. Thanks to Lori. I was able to buy Lori for that one. And then I purchased... No, I didn't purchase that one. It's already showing. I purchased this one from 123Stitch. Tara. Australia's by Dinky Dolls. Belinda, because if it says Australia, you have first dibs on this one after I stitch it. <laughs> if you want. But I thought some of the um, the silks for you would look really pretty with both of those pieces. I have stuff falling, falling everywhere. And then my last purchase was I got this baseball player. For my son to eventually stitch for my son if he continues to love baseball maybe my nephew because he loves he loves baseball too okay the rest of this is the stash stuff from a friend who went through her stash and did not want this stuff 
So the first one was the stitchy box. The Christmas tree. It's got the fabric and the floss in it. And then a second stitchy box. Cardinal Frost. I don't understand. Malfunctions. That is beautiful. I cannot wait to start this one. This one in may end up being in my not a mania start, but this one's coming up soon because that is amazing. All those beads. I showed this one already. I did already show this one. This was in the new stash from before. People were just looking at it and they liked it. No, this was from her. Look at this piece. I got both of the magazines that this is in. And then I just cross stitch. There are so many pretty pieces in this. This has got um, this has got or a lot of ornaments in it, and just because one of the X stitch designs of Revolution. Plus, I'm trying to talk my sister into stitching some of these and or into stitching, and I think that she would like some of these <laughs> patterns. Some of them I can't show. <laughs> They're all really cool. Very revolution, very alternative cross stitch. I just cross stitch ornament. This is the 2008, 2017 Dragonfly. Had to have it. Oh, another one from our Goodwill. Another Joe Elliott Angel. This one was from my Goodwill as well, and it's got the, um, it's the magazine that's got the original Angel of Cross Stitch by Joan Elliott in it. This one was also from my Goodwill. I got like seven or eight magazines from my Goodwill this month. Just Cross Stitch. This was part of the V-Stash. This is part of the D-stash that I'm going to take to my niece. It's a sock monkey and then a happy Halloween cat. Awesome schoolwork. Ink circles pedophores. Look at those colors. Oh, God, I love ink. I think ink circles right now is one of my favorite designers, or is my favorite designer. Prairie schooler heads up. Rose of Men of Swirling Flowers. I don't know that I'll do these colors. I may change them to be a little more muted. I'm not a fan of bright, bright red because of the red hair. Red. And then I've had this on my wish list for a while by Ink Circles. It is the Four Seasonal Mandalas. There, there, of course, is a spring, summer, and spring. Summer, winter, and autumn. So I remember. I think it's spring, summer, winter. Maybe you're gonna kill me. And no, 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 no. Fall. <laughs> I think that's it. I'm trying to learn sign language, guys. Little house in the works, Liberty Bells. So I'm telling you, I don't know how she has any stash left. Uh, Prairie Schooler Santa. This is 1997. Mother Maya. Ink circles. This is another one I think that would look beautiful with one of those silks for you silks. Um, while snow is falling, 
sliding gently to the ground, our neighbors from the forest cozy up and gather around. It's Forest Snowfall by Country Cottage Yorks. Long dog sim. Long dog samplers. I have sworn that I was not going to have that. <laughs> and then I had it anyway. Long dog samplers. Another stitchy box. White Queen's Jewel. Winter Queen's Jewel. I love it. This is the same design, just turned on its side. And on a smaller count. <laughs> Let there be snow. I have Silent Night in the same series. Um, Mary Noel Homespun Elegance, Avery's Little Red Truck. And then, ouch. A A N. I have no clue what it is. Sen Sentimenti. So that was pretty. Still more. Again, I have no clue how she has any. Valdani. This one is called I've Never Stitched with Valdani. M45. It doesn't have a name for it, does it, Pearl? It's very birthday colors. And then the smaller Valdani Killer Fast. Does it have a color name? But it's these pretty muted. It looks white. It's got some blue and some really pastel-y 